Okay, so today we're going to be learning about Livestream Studio 6. Uh, the first thing we need to do is log in and create an event in Livestream using Anchor TV's Livestream account. I already have a test stream for tonight, but in case you do not know how to create an event in Livestream, we'll go through that process. Okay, so I'll create an event. We'll call it test two. We'll set the date for tomorrow evening just as an example. We'll set the time to say 6.30 p.m. end time, 9.30 p.m. Category, we'll call it politics and society. Create the event. Now, when it comes to managing an event, there's several things you want to do. Um, you can add an image to the event. And I'll just add the Anchor TV logo. Crop that so it has a background poster. Simulcast options. Accounts have to be linked in through Facebook once an account. This linked in through Facebook. You can add any pages that, that Facebook account manages as a stream option. You can also add in YouTube channels as well, including multiple YouTube channels, up to five different sources for a live stream software. And then once the event is all set up, we can publish the event. Okay, once Livestream Studio 6 is installed, you can open up the software and it will first ask you for a login screen. I want to show you quickly what happens if it doesn't. If anyone can download the software, there's no cost to it, it should, but it will just put you in the demo mode. And that will be a good way for new people who want to learn about the software to play with the software. You can see it even has its own small tutorial where it tells you about your audio and video inputs, your preview monitor and program monitor, your stream destinations, and what to do when you're ready to go live. And then there's also other internal help that the software has. But we'll log in and we'll log in with Livestream. Since Anchor TV has Livestream credentials, I'm going to do this off camera. Okay, now that I'm logged in with Anchor TV's Livestream account, I already set up a project file earlier which had all of my inputs, graphics, and audio settings saved. So I'll open up Anchor TV test I created earlier. You can see in the corner here that this is somewhat stressful on the CPU. You should have a decent computer with a decent processor and a good amount of RAM to run this. Okay, so some basics about the live stream interface. You have your inputs, audio, your guest management system. Again, you have your stream settings, your graphics, and your transition settings as well. Okay, so we're back now to the stream section here on our interface. Uh, the event I selected is Stream Test 1. This is an event I set up earlier for tonight, but I won't actually go live. Default live stream settings, because we're broadcasting to Facebook, the limit is 720p anyway. YouTube, you can get up to 1080p for a live stream. Well, it's going to be uh, a lot for your your internet connection. You can set your encoding, uh, full widescreen, 169, and then assuming we had everything else set up, I uh, would just hit go live to stream to live stream, and then live stream once takes that feed, and then live stream pushes it to your simulcast options, whether it be multiple Facebook pages, YouTube, etc.
When it comes to inputs, this is where Livestream Studio 6 really has a lot of options. I already have a lot of inputs added on my preview interface here. So I can add an input, I can have a local camera, meaning a local capture card, webcam, my monitors, remote inputs by IP. I can have remote guests, which is we intend to use a lot by giving guests a stream link that live stream creates. You can also pull in other streams, RTMP streams, etc. You can have your media inputs as inputs, meaning if you had a video you wanted to play out, you could set that as an input and then cut to that video or transition to that video. You can manage multiple audio only inputs. And your graphics, uh, Livestream Studio 6 only has three graphics inputs right now, which I have set up already. Okay, next we'll cover the audio interface. Uh, right now I have two levels up that I'm mixing. I have webcam one audio and webcam two audio. Um, if you were to add guests or other inputs and unmute their audio inputs, you could then control the levels. Right now, most of everything else is either muted or doesn't have audio, such as the graphics inputs or the desktop inputs which I have muted. Real simple audio mixer here, just unmute the input or mute the input and you can mute it again or unmute. Um, you will see levels on green. Let's make sure it doesn't peak out too much but you have a slider here to control the volume level and you have a master record stream output record output that this is kind of your fader that controls the overall volume of the show. Okay, so next we'll cover the guest tabs. And this is the link that you would create each time that you could then bring in guests to your live stream event and their webcam and audio setup. And it's a browser-based interface on their end for that. You would simply send them the code that it creates each time, which you can reset, which I recommend doing every time, otherwise guests from previous sessions um, could show up as inputs if they were online at the same time. Again, once you have a guest all set up and you send them that code, you can add the guest as an input I'll quickly show you what it looks like on the guest info, guest link. They would simply copy the link that you sent them, put it into a browser, and they would get the interface where it asks them to use the webcam and audio source of their choosing. They can put in their name, they can join the event, and on the interface they see a return feed of whatever is being output from the Livestream Studio software. And then in Livestream, you can add them as an input. Okay, next we'll talk about graphics. We have three different options here for graphics. We're gonna have three graphics queued in at once. Right now I'm using all three as inputs. And for the first graphic here, I basically just have the Anchor TV logo. If I push that, It'll show up on screen, use this as a kind of transition or intro piece, and then pull the graphic. Um, in order to add this bug in, or this logo in, I added a layer in this interface. And then I was able to edit that layer, add an image, and add a static image for the logo. I then resize the graphic. For graphic 2, I have a little more going on here. I created a graphic using a logo and then text within the software itself to add a kind of a make a simple lower third. For graphic option three, I have a little more going on in the sense that I brought in a full graphic that was made in Photoshop. And then because it was size 469 video, 
it filled up the graphic interface completely and now I can put up a very nice looking graphic okay now that we covered most of the basics a quick review regarding streaming you want to link up your event that you made in live stream regarding inputs you want to set your inputs if you want guests for your show that you're producing you want to send them the guest link and make sure they understand they need to use a browser-based uh, application to feed their webcam and audio into that will then go to the live stream software on your end audio you have a full audio mixer for all your inputs graphics you can add multiple graphics in with multiple layers and also have multiple graphics up at the same time if I, if I were to push multiple graphics you can also bring in pre-made graphics that might look a little better than what you can make in the live stream studio software now we'll cover switching so there default hotkeys on your keyboard are the F1 through F12 will cut your inputs live so say if I wanted to cut to uh, webcam 2 F1 2 on my output monitor here I can see it switch to my camcorder F1 bring it back to myself you also have preview options if you want to do a transition the numbers 1 through 0 work for all your inputs going from left to right if I hit 2 that will put the webcam 2 in preview mode um, and then I can do an effect yeah we just did a simple fade or it's the proper way to cut is on a, on a two bus system but you can cut directly either by double clicking an input and there's desktop, desktop one which is running live stream right now or you can cut by hitting the F keys by default F2 and over here I have desktop 2 on input 4 and that's OBS running the recording right now one thing to note that's interesting is that live stream studio can pull RTMP feeds and can also pull other types of remote feeds whether it be IP feeds or NDI feed so going forward when things start to normalize a bit um, if you wanted to broadcast a basketball game using the TriCaster you could have that push an NDI feed back to a computer in the office and then from the office host a kind of either a pregame or a halftime show using a webcam in there and then switch back to the TriCaster as a feed but do all of your broadcasting from the office rather through your Facebook and YouTube and you can also push an NDI feed which the campus TV playback system is capable of receiving and putting back on channel 3 as well okay that pretty much wraps up the basics of live stream studio 6 um, the big features in this update for live stream studio is the fact that they added this guest system where you can bring in guests through a browser based link that will feed to live stream aside from that the more time you put in on pre-production setting up your interface setting up graphics um, doing tests with streaming and tests with guest links uh, the better your production will come out live 